Some RV destinations are popular single season locations, but some are equally popular both in summer and fall. This week, Jeff Johnson gives us another look at the Michigan Upper Peninsula, a definite multi-season destination. Then, did you know your dog's paws are just as sensitive to heat, cold, and pain as your feet? This week, Dr. Fitz explains common paw injuries and how to care for your dog's sensitive paws, then shows us some unique paw protection items. With fall here and winter around the corner, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us some important products you should have when prepping your RV for storage. This is the last week to enter our Care Camp Super Nobo 2 sweepstakes, where you can win a one-of-a-kind custom Forest River No Boundaries travel trailer, and at the same time, support Care Camps, special oncology camps for children with cancer. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. Michigan's Upper Peninsula has long been one of our favorite RV travel destinations. Its scenery, history, food, and fun people add up to a region that's ripe for RV exploration. The trip starts with a run across the Straits of Mackinac Bridge on US 75. And there's something truly magical and fun about the UP that makes us want to keep coming back. And for us, the official start of our UP trip starts when we're crossing the mighty map, the big bridge over the Mackinac Strait. It's a fun drive, you got great scenery out there, and when we cross the Big Mac, it means the Upper Peninsula magic is about to start. We reached Manistique a bit late, but we were in time to see the full moon rising near the city's historic water tower. We headed to Indian Lake State Park for the night. Our home for this journey was a Jayco Melbourne Motorhome, a compact rig that was just right for UP wandering and comfortable living. Easy access sites and the usual amenities made for fast setup and the adjacent Indian Lake was a gorgeous backdrop for the evening. It's our first night here in the UP. We're at Indian Lake State Park in Manistique, Michigan. We arrived a little bit too late to cook outside, so naturally we stopped and picked something up along the way. And when you're in the UP, the normal thing to pick up is pasties. Got a couple of pasties, uh, local beer, Escanaba black beer, uh, gin and tonic. So it looks to me like we're pretty well set for the night. Our next destination is Kitch Itikippi Big Spring in Palms Book State Park near Manistique. Easy access RV parking is plentiful. This site is Michigan's largest spring and it's a fascinating natural attraction. The tethered, people-powered observation raft is designed for easy viewing of the features visible through the crystal clear water. This is a beautiful natural feature. With a raft, you go out on the springs and you get to look down through this wonderful clear water and the fascinating geology and animal life down below. It's a cool place to visit. More than 10,000 gallons of water per minute enter the pool through the limestone rocks below. The water remains at 45 degrees all year, so the spring never freezes, and the gushing water helps keep the sandy bottom in constant motion. Fat trout and ancient lime-encrusted trees and branches can also be seen in the crystal clear water. Next up was Fayette Historic State Park. This 1867-era town includes many restored buildings and historic displays that help a visitor envision life in an early-day iron-smelting community. Fayette State Park is an iron smelting village. Um, in its heyday, it was in operation from 1867 to 1891. Um, there was 500 residents in and around Fayette. We encompassed 711 acres. They made pig iron. Um, they shipped in iron ore from Nagani by rail to Escanaba, and then it was shipped by uh, shipped over from uh, to uh, Escanaba to Fayette um, with the abundance of hardwood on the peninsula um, that was brought in from locally and made uh, pig iron, and then that was shipped out to the Great Lakes. Uh, the hardwood was used to make the, the charcoal to fire to, uh, to fire the blast furnaces. Some of the structures here at Fayette are kind of fun because they're a little bit immersive. After you, sweetie. 
Well, today one of the kilns um, still stands in the park. Um, the rest of them, you can see the ruins of some of them. And then on the peninsula, there's different sites where you can still see the ruins of old kilns. Um, a lot of the buildings still stand um, today, and they're, they've got displays set up in them where you can walk into them and see how they lived back in that day. Um, the, the hotel, um, the bottom floor of the hotel is open, the superintendent's house. Um, most of the you know, buildings today still stand. This is one of the casting rooms here at Fayette Park. The iron ore was drawn out of the furnaces, ran down through troughs in the floor, and cast into pig iron that was then shipped out for later use. Pig iron very much its like this guy here. Oof! They weigh somewhere over 100 pounds apiece. <sighs> All day long casting these guys and shipping them out. Life was not easy here at Fayette Park back in those days. Between the brutal winters, the dangerous working conditions, well, it's what you did to make a living, I guess, and to make the, the pig iron that helped to build the country. Fayette State Historic Park is one of those wonderful places where the preservation efforts of all concerned, combined with the presence of all these fantastic original structures, helps to bring a little bit of Michigan history to life. Fayette State Park Campground is just a few miles south of the historic park and a great place to camp when touring the area. A rare blood moon and eclipse event took place the night of our visit, so we stayed up until the wee hours to witness the spectacle. It's tough to catch on camera, but we sure enjoyed the show. We'll continue our Upper Peninsula adventure right after these commercial messages, so stay tuned. Aquacam Possums, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Welcome back to the show. We continue our Michigan Upper Peninsula adventure with a few words about finding your way around in the UP. Campground number two in the UP. Been here for a couple days now and we can already feel the relaxation setting in and the stress blowing out. You smell that UP air, you can't beat it. We're at the uh, Fayette State Park Campground, connected to the Fayette Historic Site. This is kind of off the beaten path, but it's easier to find places like this. Our standard of reference is the Delorme Atlas and Gazetteer series. In this case, the Michigan, obviously, because we're in the UP. This book lets us find places like this very easily. The details are fantastic and we can never get lost, well, almost never, by relying on our gazette here. Next, we head north to the crossroads town of Shingleton and stop by a small family-run company building a classic product that's well-suited to the North Country. Winter sports and winter recreation are really important here in the UP. After all, they have an awful lot of winter up here. We're gonna be paying a visit here to a company whose products help to support winter sports. It's Iverson Snowshoe Company. And what makes them unique is that they do things the old-fashioned way. They build their snowshoes entirely in the U.S. out of locally sourced products. And they, their craftsmanship and the way the products look, it uh, kind of harkens back to a different time in winter recreation. Well, we're here at Iverson Snowshoe, and unfortunately, we arrived at a time when the factory wasn't quite in production yet for the year. But here in the, the showroom, they have a little bit of a display so you can take a look and see what kind of products they make. They have over 22 different styles of snowshoes, typically made out of rawhide or neoprene, made with a white ash wood frame. And they also have really nice looking, very artistic fishnets. Well, the factory isn't running yet here at Iverson, but they still got a little bit of stock backed up for when they can get started. 
This one is called a 10 by 36 uh, Green Mountain. It's been bent. It's made out of the, the bent white ash, which they steam in order to bend like this. And it still has to be laced up and so on, but uh, it's well on its way to becoming another pair of classic Iverson snowshoes. Look for these at L.L. Bean, uh, sporting good retailers and so on nationwide. Rolling on TV factoid. People who live in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, or UP, are UPers and are known locally as UPers. Next stop, Ispeming, Michigan. Tourism is a very important industry here in the UP. There's all kinds of tourist destinations, some would say tourist traps, but there is in fact only one genuine tourist trap here in the UP. The Youpers Tourist Trap was started by Jim Pooley de Care, the head guy at the Youpers Comedy and Music Group. Well, you know, I always, I always got a kick out of when I travel on the road and stuff. Uh, we go to a lot of the rock and mineral shows all over the country and stuff and do buying for our store. And uh, we're traveling back in the 70s uh, when all the hippies were out there on the road. And, you know, so we had to uh, saw a lot of, you know, we used to stop to see the world's largest ball of twine and, and uh, the plastic dinosaur. And so does everybody else, you know, so I said, well, you know, that would be kind of a, a, a we have to have something here, not only uh, a store with gifts, but something to look at. I was so impressed with wall drugs, uh, you know, I, that with the signs and all that and along the highway. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, people come uh, travel, they want to stop. So we got, we advertise free admission and free bathrooms. And the free bathroom thing is important. It may be a joke, but it's important. People would say, who created all this stuff? This is just wonderful. I said, a D student created all this because an A student could never think of this stuff like this. And I was the guy in the back of the class that was doing all the bird calls. So I had nothing else to do but think about this stuff. So we started and then start, people started bringing in stuff. Oh, this was my father's, he just loved this. It worked. You know, it'd be so nice if you put his name on it. And so when, the, when uh, they have people coming up, they take them here to see their father's sculptures or their, their father's uh, thing. So it's, it's kind of cool to have people come here and thank you, you know. And I'm thanking them, well, thanks for thinking about us. In addition to the outdoor displays, the shop carries a wide variety of the usual suspects, including souvenirs, apparel, and regional food items. Plus, there's a first-rate rock and mineral shop on site. Our next night's stay at Van Riper State Park was peaceful, scenic, and included another memorable evening campfire. To learn more about anything you've seen during our UP journey, log on to RollinOnTV.com. From off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid and Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Welcome to Rolling on TV's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz and this is Bruno. Today we're going to be addressing canine paw protection, specifically related to hot surfaces. The main surfaces that we worry about for heat-related injury are asphalt, cement or concrete, and even sand. When you plan to take your dog for a walk downtown or to the beach, you should ensure that the surface is safe enough for their paws. You can ensure that the surface is safe for your dog to walk on by placing your hand directly on the ground. If you can't, <laughs> if you can't keep your hand in place for at least 10 seconds, the surface is too hot for your dog to walk on safely for any length of time. Remember, you're wearing shoes, but your dog is usually barefoot. 
Some ways that owners have protected their dog's feet include putting special boots or socks on their dog. So boots like these that have extra protection on the bottom can be helpful. Many dogs don't like these boots at first and usually avoid walking while they're on. But once your dog is used to them, they can keep your dog's paw pads safe from the hot pavement or sand. Some owners even use them on hikes or in the campground to keep their dog's feet safe from twigs and rocks that may damage the pads. Make sure that you try out the boots prior to traveling as there are different sizes and styles. If you've ever had a blister when wearing the wrong hiking boots, you can imagine that your dog may feel the same if the boots don't fit. If your dog won't wear protective boots, try to walk them on surfaces that don't get very hot, such as grass or dirt. Also, consider walking them in the morning or the evening time when temperatures have cooled. What if, in spite of your precautions, your pet burns its paws? Burns of the feet can be very painful, so keep this in mind even if the burn is small. In season one of Paws on Board, I covered some items to have in a pet first aid kit. It can be important to have triple antibiotic ointment and bandage material with you so you can quickly treat and cover a burn. Small burns can heal on their own pretty quickly, but more extensive burns involving multiple paw pads may need further treatment and pain medication. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the case, gently bandage the areas and take your pet to a veterinarian for treatment. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rollingontv.com. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz. This is Bruno. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. Win this 2021 Super Nobo 2. Rolling on TV and Forest River have teamed up again in supporting care camps with a sweepstakes for this custom 2021 Super Nobo 2 travel trailer. Don't pass up this opportunity to support care camps, which are special oncology camps for children with cancer that allows these deserving children the chance to enjoy life in the great outdoors and just be kids. By supporting care camps, you also get the chance to win this awesome one-of-a-kind Super Nobo 2. For a full video on this Super Nobo 2 and how to enter the sweepstakes, just visit rollingontv.com and click on the Care Camp Sweepstakes link. By the way, that beautiful Advanced Elements kayak you see with the Nobo is one of the fun RV toys included in the sweepstakes package. I'd say it's time to log on to rollingontv.com and enter the sweepstakes soon. Aquacam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. When the time comes to put your RV in short or long term storage, there are a few products that help make the task easier. Let's take a look. Tire pressure gauge. A good quality RV tire pressure gauge is an essential tool for RV owners. When it comes time to store the RV, inflate the tires to the manufacturer's recommended max cold pressure. Tires in storage can lose 2 to 3 PSI per month, so it's important to check and adjust the tire inflation pressure when you take the RV out of storage too. Tire blocking. While we are on the topic of tires, if the RV is stored on the ground or on pavement, put the tires on some type of blocking. The blocking needs to be wider than the footprint of the tire to protect the tires from damage. Tire covers. Another important tire related product is tire covers. If the RV is stored outside exposed to the elements, tire covers will protect the tires from the sun and the harmful UV rays. RV cover. If the RV is stored outside, try to avoid parking it under trees or in areas where grass and weeds grow. 
The sun and other elements can damage your RV. The best investment you can make for an RV stored outside is a quality RV cover. The cover should be made of a breathable material to help promote air circulation and prevent mold and mildew. You can purchase a cover made specifically for the size and type of RV you have. Digital Multimeter Another essential tool for RV owners is a digital multimeter. Like tires, a battery in storage can lose up to 10% of its charge every month. When a battery is in a low state of charge, small crystals start forming on the plates. This is called solfation. And if it remains in this condition for an extended period of time without recharging, the battery is ruined. Solfation starts when a battery state of charge drops below 80% or 12.4 volts for a 12 volt battery. To prevent this from happening, you can measure the voltage using a digital voltmeter every month. Measuring the voltage gives you a quick picture of the battery's depth of discharge so you know when the battery needs to be recharged. Set the voltmeter on DC voltage and place the red lead on the positive terminal and the black lead on the negative terminal to read battery voltage. A fully charged 12 volt battery will read 12.7 volts. Any battery at or below 12.5 needs to be recharged immediately. Battery charger, maintainer, and conditioner. Newer RVs come equipped with a three-stage battery charger. This means the built-in charger will charge the battery without damaging it. If your RV doesn't have a three-stage battery charger, or if you don't want to constantly worry about the battery when it's in storage, you can purchase some type of battery charger, maintainer, and conditioner. I personally use battery minder products, but there are other products available like the battery tender. You simply connect the battery minder to the RV battery and let it do its job. It will charge, maintain, and condition the battery, preventing solfation, but it will never overcharge the battery. RV roof vent covers. I recommend installing roof vent covers like Max Air vent covers over the existing roof vents on the RV. These vent covers allow you to open the roof vent for ventilation while the RV is in storage without worrying about rain getting inside the RV. If you install two vent covers on opposite ends of the RV, it will help promote cross ventilation throughout the RV while it's in storage. Rodent control products. A common problem when the RV is in storage is rodent control. Inspect the underside of the RV thoroughly. Look for anywhere mice or other rodents can get inside. Mice only need a dime-sized hole to get in the RV, so inspect the exterior and interior closely. Seal any openings using silicone or a spray foam product from a home improvement store. There are lots of aftermarket products for controlling rodents like Sniff and Stop or Mothballs. But if you live close to where the RV is stored and can check the RV frequently, mouse traps are effective too. Remove all consumables that would attract mice and other rodents and remove all perishables and anything that can freeze. Defrost the freezer compartment and clean the refrigerator. Leave the refrigerator doors propped open and place some baking soda inside the refrigerator compartment to absorb odors. RV Marine Antifreeze. The biggest problem during cold weather storage by far is the potential for the RV plumbing system to freeze, expand, and break if the plumbing system is not protected. The best way to protect it is by winterizing the RV plumbing system using an RV marine antifreeze. Winterizing your RV is not a difficult job, and if you want to tackle the job yourself, check out our video and ebook training at rvonlinetraining.com. For additional information on anything featured on this week's show, along with additional stories, videos, and information about RVs, camping, and the RV lifestyle, along with the latest news and trends, be sure to visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. As usual, this has been another fun production. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.